Let's talk a little bit about the examination and how we go about it and what the anatomy looks like. Just to reemphasize though, before we get into that, the take home points. Assess the clinical likelihood. That's the first step before we even put, place the probe on their arm or leg. Remember there are three deep venous junctions. The veins of interest are touching arteries, but beyond the junctions, we're gonna follow the deep vessels as much in the proximal leg as is feasible. And the main thing we're looking for is do these deep veins compress or not? I said important points bear repeating. So deep veins are in contact with arteries, and this is true in the lower extremities and the upper extremities. So if you don't see the artery, you're probably looking at the wrong vein. In the legs, there are three major junctions, and then we're gonna follow the vessels as far as we can. And then don't forget, if they say, if they point to an area on their calf and they say, really hurts and it's really red right here, examine that area. And if you see a thrombosed vein, follow it to see what the extent of that is, okay? So I often focus on the deep veins, but again, if they have an obvious red or swollen, or they can point to a specific tender or painful area, even in the calf, look at that area with ultrasound, see if there's a thrombosed vein, and then follow it to see the extent of it. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe there's a foreign body or a cellulitis or something, but certainly don't ignore those areas that patients say it hurts right here. So the quality DVT focus, and that's what we're gonna focus on. And if we do this with quality, then we can apply all these guidelines and decision-making tools. If you don't do a quality exam, if you're kind of ascribing to some older literature that describes a two-point exam, or you're not doing as thorough of a study, then you can't really apply these decision-making tools and the literature and the guidelines that we talk about aren't gonna to apply to your study. So make sure you're doing a quality study. And that study needs to include the saphenofemoral junction, we'll show you what that looks like, the common and the deep femoral venous junction, I'll show you what that looks like, and the popliteal vein, we wanna find the trifurcation, I'll show you what that looks like as well. Sometimes you'll hear the femoral vein, the common femoral vein, there's some inconsistency in the description of that, sometimes it's called the superficial femoral vein, which has led to confusion in trainees and even led to confusion in myself during my training, the superficial femoral vein. Most of us have tried to get away from calling it that and we'll now call it the common femoral vein to one, help us understand that it's not a superficial vein and that a clot here represents a deep venous thrombosis. And two, just to help us recognize it as it differentiates itself and branches into the deep femoral vein. So here are the inguinal veins that we're gonna look at and we're mostly gonna start our exam pretty much right here at the inguinal crease. Although most of the time when we place the probe, it will be somewhere below this saphenofemoral junction. Maybe not, but most of the time we're gonna find the femoral artery at the vein probably next to it. And this saphenofemoral junction is often proximal to where we first place the probe, but maybe not. Make sure you just, when you're here, you search up and down until you find that junction. And that's our first kind of, that's our most proximal starting point. So here's where we're gonna start. We wanna find the common femoral vein and we wanna slide the probe either towards the head or towards the feet until we find the saphenofemoral junction. And one other tip is get the patient as flat as they can tolerate. If the patient is sitting straight upright with their waist at a 90 degree angle, that's one gonna make your exam harder and it also increases the pressure in the veins making them harder to compress and may lead to false positive studies. So get the patient as flat as possible. Obviously, some patients aren't able to tolerate, but as the best you can, get them as flat as you possibly can. So that's our first junction. We get the probe in their groin and identify the femoral artery, the vein next to it, slide up and down until we see the saphenofemoral junction. The saphenous, the junction is usually going to be medial and superficial, and we'll take a look at that. The next, once we find that, we start to track distally following the common femoral vein, and we want to make sure we catch the deep femoral junction where the deep femoral vein splits off, and it's going to be very vertical and it comes and goes very quickly. So we have to be careful and meticulous to find this. And then we just follow this vein down as far as we can, and especially where, anywhere they have pain. So don't just stop here at these junctions. Find these veins, find the junctions, make sure all the veins you find compress, and then follow this vein all the way down. After we've done that, we're gonna to move to the popliteal fossa. Essentially what we wanna find is the popliteal vein, which again is going to be in contact with the artery. And once we find that popliteal vein, we will slide the probe or fan the probe from head to feet until we see the trifurcation in the popliteal fossa. And I don't even kind of think about the names of these veins too much. I just try to find all the branch points and make sure that they all compress adequately. 
Okay, so let's take a look at what this anatomy looks like. So in this example here, we are high up in the patient's groin. We've got the linear transducer, which is what we should use for all of these exams. In some rare cases, if the patient is very heavy, I may need to use the curvilinear transducer. But most of the time, if we kind of peel back the skin layers at the areas of the groin and behind the knee, we can still get, even in very obese patients, we can get an adequate exam with most linear transducers. So we're high up in the groin. Remember our navel mnemonic from medical school. The nerve is out here somewhere laterally. And then we see the artery, the femoral artery, femoral vein, and you'll notice it's in contact with the femoral artery. And if we slide towards the patient's head or down towards their feet, somewhere in there, we should see the saphenous vein and its junction with the femoral vein. And we'll often see a little valve in it. And it can make this little Mickey Mouse appearance. So femoral artery, the vein in contact to, and medial, and then we want to find the saphenous vein, superficial, and even more medial still most of the time. Once we find those, we want to compress, and what we should see is that the artery resists compression, and the veins should be fairly easily collapse completely. And that's a key, complete collapse. So this is kind of our first step, and this is our most proximal point. And just to show on the right side, remember the artery is always going to be the most lateral thing, so this is the patient's left side, the indicator is directed to the patient's right, no matter which side we're doing. So he, on the patient's left side, here's the artery, more lateral, and we see the saphenous and femoral veins medially, and they compress completely. So that's our most proximal point. That's the first step in our lower extremity DVT exam. Now once we see those, we generally just follow the femoral artery and vein. Every centimeter or two, we continually just compress the vein all the way and make sure it compresses everywhere we see it. Use the artery as a guide, check compressibility, and if we notice here, we'll see the vein splitting into two. And I'm going to show that in a little more detail. And this is only usually a centimeter or two, maybe three, distal to the saphenofemoral junction. So this is all still pretty proximal in the patient's thigh. We want to look for the femoral artery, the superficial femoral vein, or the common femoral vein, Underneath the femoral artery, because we're a little more distal down the leg, so that the anatomy has altered a little bit, but still in contact with the artery, we see the common femoral vein. Just underneath that, we'll see the deep femoral vein. It splits off, usually very vertical, and dives deep down into the thigh. So we don't see it for very long, but we want to make sure it compresses. So just to show you what this looks like, we find the vein, we collapse, and then we identify the split. Leaving that there so we can all look at that for a second and watch that split. Make sure you see that. All right, and then once we see that split, we make sure that the deep femoral vein and the common femoral vein both collapse completely, and then we follow the common femoral vein as distally down the thigh as we can see it. Use the artery as a guide. Sometimes the vein will seem to be lost, but we'll still be able to see the artery, but if we just compress around the artery, we'll often see the vein collapse. So follow that down the leg as far as you possibly can. It only adds another 20 seconds to your exam. Once we have seen those two junctions in the proximal thigh, and followed the common femoral vein as distally as we possibly can, then we're gonna to move to the popliteal fossa. When we get to the popliteal fossa, we're gonna to try to recognize the anatomy that looks something like this. So usually most deep and close down to the bone, we're gonna see the popliteal artery, and then the popliteal vein is gonna be sitting on top. We'll probably see some superficial branches, and the most important thing is we don't get fooled by those. We make sure we find the big deep artery, and as we compress, we wanna see bone kinda of edge into the screen, and we'll show you that. And if you want, here's the tibial nerve, but that's not really today's topic. And then once we identify those, we would just wanna make sure all the venous structures collapse. There is a little tiny arterial branch that you'll see here. Just make sure that you recognize that's not the popliteal artery. Popliteal vein is the big one next to the popliteal artery. We really want all the venous structures that are visible to us to collapse. Then after that, what we wanna do is we wanna fan proximal and distal, and I find in most patients it's actually proximal to the popliteal crease, uh, but it's different from patient to patient, so just fan proximal and distal, keeping some compression so you can identify this. Look for the trifurcation. You don't need to name each vein, but just try to find all the branches from the popliteal vein and make sure they collapse. These junctions are places where clots like to get hung up, so make sure you examine these. And here's what they may look like in still, but let's show you what they look like as you fan up and you look for compression. But again, they're all nearby next to the artery. And as we compress, 
we see the bone of the distal femur edge into our screen. So seeing bone at the bottom of our screen is a good confirmation that we're scanning deep enough. And also take a look. Here we're at about six centimeters. Depending on your patient, this may be more like eight centimeters deep. These are deep structures. They should not be sitting up here in this subcutaneous tissue. You should be seeing other connective tissue and muscle tissue kind of around these deep veins in the deep artery. But if you see bone as you compress, that's a pretty good clue that you're imaging deeply enough. Like I said, any other place on their calf where they say, look, it's really red and swollen and tender and it hurts right here. Take a look at that area, see if there's cellulitis or some kind of superficial thrombosis. And if you see any thrombosis, follow it proximally and see what the extent of it is and see if it's next to an artery. If you see a thrombosis next to an artery, then that may be a deep venous thrombosis. So next up, we're gonna do vessels. To look for the vessels, we start up high up in the femoral crease. Again, right about the same point where we're looking at the hip, right about halfway between the ASIS and the uh, pubic symphysis. And when we first find the vessels, we see the artery and the vein, the vein's medial. If we track proximally, we should see the saphenous vein. As it joins in the femoral vein, and the veins should collapse, and the artery resists compression. If we track the vein a little bit more distally, you can see they align themselves vertically. And if we're careful, we can see the vertical split of the deep femoral vein. And that's an important landmark when we're looking to rule out DVT, to make sure we see the deep femoral vein, as well as the common, and they both collapse. You can see that deep one down there? You know, go up, they, they're together, there they split. So if you're doing DVT study, you got to get down to that point. We get into the popliteal fossa. So I'm just going to have you bend a little bit here. Just grab the transducer however you're holding it. Get right in the crease. Identify the vessels. Make sure the vein collapses. Track it proximal. Do you see all the branch points? Popliteal trifurcation. Make sure all the branch points compress. You can see it branching there. All those venous structures collapse. 